fighting machines. Tongues of metal. They knew exactly what they were doing. So goes one of the lines in the Jeff Wayne adaptation of War of the Worlds, which is something I heard when I was... Well, never mind how young I was. But it always stuck with me that this was this horrifying thing. And that's the topic for the day. The outside context problem. Which is from Ian and Beck's book, Accession. Talking about when a civilization encounters something which it just can't possibly cope with. He says that a civilization typically encounters an outside context problem the same way that a sentence encounters a full stop. That's how it ends. And his example is the one of the island nation, which has mastered canoes and trade and Scottish religion going. And then a battleship shows up because Ian and Banks was a civilization fan and often worried about wondered about that situation when the AI battleship turns up and says, well, we've been advancing a lot faster than you have. Come and join us. And this is something you should include in your game. The outside context problem. The problem just so large and vast and complicated that it cannot be dealt with in any normal way. Any usual way. Uh, you see this in some games. You see this an awful lot in horror games. In Call of Cthulhu, it is fairly evident that the great old ones and their servants regard the earth as theirs and this annoying little ape-like species which has occupied it now is just an annoying detail. And the fact that the players are this ape-like species is the source of the horror, how they engage with beings that regard them pretty much as rats in the walls. War of the Worlds is another good example. The Victorians are getting along famously and ruling their vast world spanning empire. The Vartians turn up and just start burning and stomping everybody. And But how do you do it in, say, a fantasy game? How do you introduce the outside context problem? Enemies just too complicated for them to be dealt with. So we're not dealing with your mad wizards or your sore on lookalikes, because those are understandable problems. They're just a bad guy who you go and kill. In fact, just like any other mad warlord, Sauron is just a powerful warlord. When all is said and done, he's rather hard to kill, but there is a plan to kill him. You know how to do it. An outside context problem for Sauron would be some alien, some outsider or aberration, to use the D&D terms, who doesn't come from you're not recognizable by as part of the local pantheons he's not just another warlord he's got some other weird inscrutable motivation maybe he wants to colonize middle earth he wants to change it in whatever bizarre way to suit his purposes or its purposes more likely or he's just passing through he's done the equivalent of setting up camp for the night and has set out his little minions to well, gather in food and supplies and make sure that his camp is nice and comfy for him. In the same way that, well, you would terrify a colony of ants if you rolled up in your car and drove over their mound and then set down your tent nearby and placed out all this food and then started spraying the ants with giant poison, poison sprays, you know, Imagine how that would feel. You're only staying there for a couple of weeks on your camping holiday. But a couple of weeks is a lifetime to an ant. So imagine that to your fantasy world. Something just turns up for a holiday. It's not inimical outwardly. It presents no ill will to your civilization. It's just decided it just doesn't notice it doesn't regard it as important or enters into a scheme. And if you bother it or annoy it or start stealing food from it, well, it's going to stomp on you or spray on you and give you give your civilization a really hard time. But it's not evil. It's not conquering you just because it wants to. It's not aggrandizing. It's not making you part of another empire. It's just passing through. Or 
even worse for a more modern game. Imagine what would happen if aliens came down and they're a film crew. They're here to do a documentary on the wild inhabitants of Earth. And so they've come with their cameras and recording devices and set, they set up a satellite network to broadcast. And that, of course, interferes with our own communication system. So that goes down. And the people who are doing the observing, well, they have hides. Hides to hide you from humans. What would they look like? Probably like cloaking devices from Star Trek. They would just turn invisible. Or they would just be unnoticeable in the same way that a hunter or a biologist in the wild can make their camp seemingly invisible to the animals they are studying. Imagine how aliens could be a fair invisible anywhere just observing. And of course they will have weapons to defend themselves or to protect themselves or even worse tools just to do tests on the subjects to see what they would do if you say start a fire or burn down one of their buildings how do humans react in a disaster and they have a machine for stimulating disasters how terrible would that be and imagine discovering that finding out that there are aliens on earth and then eventually discovering they're not there to conquer you or subjugate you they're not just passing through, they're just studying you, and well, it seemed all pretty horrible from your end of the, end of the lens, well, they've actually got their ethics bills passed, and you know, they've submitted the forms and whatever universities and protocols they go through, they've fulfilled their ethics requirements, and it's just fine, dandy, to set fire to a few thousand humans and knock down one of their buildings just to see how they react and what they do to it. So that's another outside context problem. The investigator, the video recording team. Or maybe they're not even here to say, they're just here to do a movie. They've moved into the area because it's perfect for their needs. It looks just like an ancient, an ancient history video from their ancient history when they were at our stage of civilization. And so weird things just start happening. Actors are beamed down, and start carrying out their own moves. They don't care about you, the natives. You're just background to them. They're doing their weird thing. And Imagine if a bunch of people came in and did the alien version of Die Hard in your city. Because, well, you're not members of the Galactic Confederation. And so they can go around blowing things up, doing char chases in the mid-afternoon, and... You try and interfere with it, and a security team steps in and pinks you away with their massive, really overpowered energy weapons and bizarre battle armor. That's standard issue for security forces. They're not military, they're not invaders, they're just filming a movie and they're the crowd control. Sorry, monkeys. So that's another thing. Another outside contact problem. Another bizarre and imagine they're doing a two year long movie in your city how do you react how do you deal with it can you deal with it can you negotiate with them will they negotiate back will they negotiate with primitives think back to what the Europeans did when they were filming movies and exotic locations they didn't care about who had who actually owned the land they just did it now you're on the back foot. The other way to go about an outside context problem, you could be the outside context problem itself. You could be the invaders. You could be the ones stomping over well, a fantasy society or modern society or even a futuristic society with your massively out overpowering weapons. How do you react to that? How do you, what do you do? Do you take pity on these creatures? Or do you just exploit them for all that it's worth? And how do you react against other people who are coming and want to muscle in on your deal? If you are down on, well, wherever, London, shooting your movie, and some investors from your civilization come in and want to develop it or change it, how do you do? Or worse, environmentalists come, and they want you to stop shooting because you are destroying the environment of 
this pristine industrial hellhole that is Earth. And this must be rec recorded as a living historical document or whatever. How do you react to them? So yes, you can be the outside context problem yourself. You can be the invaders. You can be the people who are just having a picnic. Giant be tentacled horrors have picnics too. And if they haven't have a picnic over your standard fantasy society, what do you do when the team of paladins and clerics and wizards and barbarians and fighters all turn up to challenge you? You're just having lunch. You know, you're not bothering anybody. You haven't hurt any other tent be tentacled horrors in the neighborhood. But here are these people and they just want to murderize you. What do you do? How do you deal with that? So, those are my thoughts on the outside context problems. Throw them in your adventures, or be them yourself.